There have been a lot of issues that have uh, come up concerning coronavirus, but let me just give you the latest updates being the fact that as it stands, there have been some confirmed 75,000 or more cases um, in China and other parts of the world as well. Majority of it being in China, uh, the origin of the coronavirus. And unfortunately, over 2,000 people have passed on just recently two more people died from the diamond princess one from uh, coronavirus being tested positive and one from pneumonia and most of these people and two of these people actually were 80 years and above and so there was also that conversation about the fact that when it hits people who are 80 years and above it's more likely to kill them than the people who are younger um, now Ghanaian students in China have been crying for government <coughs> to evacuate them or at least to Ghana or at least out of um, you know the province where it originated from and Recently, the president, during his State of the Nation address, said that they would only evacuate them if and if it becomes necessary. Because as it stands, they are still uh, having discussions with some experts who think that they should contain the virus from the place of origin. And so as long as no Ghanaian student uh, has been confirmed to have coronavirus, they think that they will protect them. And some money and food is still being given to them to ensure that they are fine. The Nukes president from China says he's still not convinced by the president. A session. So we'll be speaking uh, to Horace Ni Ai Ankara, and he was in China under the Mahama government. And so he'll be telling us a bit more about what he thinks about Ghana's preparedness towards fighting the pandemic in case we confirm a case in Ghana. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're well. I'm fine, thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure what do you think here. about the president's statement at the State of the Nation concerning the evacuation of students? Well, I, I think that. Um uh, let me say a very good morning to your viewers. I think it's, it's, it's a good call. Um, most times when these things happen, we, we tend to panic. Mm. And um, I, I also believe that um, a place like China has the facilities. And um, if this thing sort of started in China, why do you want to export it? But the students are saying that their lives are at stake. I, I, believe, I believe in the embassy. I believe in the ambassador there. And I think that um, they will do their best to making sure that Ghanaians are safe. And for, for me, um, I think that China has the facilities. Now, the numbers seem so scary because, well, Chinese are so many. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Chinese are so many. So, uh, um, and this thing started in what? Is it Wuhan? Yeah, in Wuhan. Yes, yeah, in Hubei province. In, yeah, yeah, started in Wuhan. So, I should think that if for anything at all, um, Ghanaians in Wuhan are those that um, has to be taken care of. Uh, I, I, think, I think that China has the facilities to making sure that uh, uh, Ghanaians are safe. And the embassy, I also trust the ambassador that he is doing his best to making sure that Ghanaians in China are safe. But they are saying that nobody has paid them a visit. Now, they are even asking to be evacuated from the Wuhan um, you know, city, at least out of the origin of coronavirus, to another city that may not have as many cases, so that they know that government is, is still considering them. You started a campaign when you were in China, that Ghanaian lives in China matter, where you were constantly getting in touch with the yeah. Ghanaians living in China. Yeah, and so I, I, I traveled the length and breadth of China, making sure of Ghanaians there. And uh, I believe that the current administration in China is doing the same. Now, this is a situation where it's not just um, the, the Ghanaian embassy officials who can easily or just travel to anywhere at all and say, the Ghanaian matter, therefore, I'm coming to Wuhan. But other yeah. countries are doing it. They are evacuating their <coughs> they, people. They, they're doing it through, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the Chinese authorities, mm -hmm. obviously. And if the Chinese authority are saying that, yes, the Ghanaian life is safe, I, I, think, I think that China has enough facilities, and um, they, they're doing what uh, they can. And, um, well, countries like America yeah. actually has evacuated um, its citizens. A from, lot more I, of I, them. I, I think from the... The, 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 the Diamond the, Princess? Yes. yes. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think that they're doing it all over China. Okay. They're not doing it all over China, because the facilities are there. And um, I, I think that with the... Um, cruise ship, mm -hmm. that, that is uh, uh, very unique. I mean, obviously, there's a point that you could go and get a, a certain number of your citizens, your citizens and then yeah. uh, take them back to your country. But um, across China, the facilities should be there. And, well, I don't have um, any report on that, but um, I do not think that the embassy will just sit down aloof, not even... The students said it themselves, that they have not exactly had people come to them 
you know, um, to at least offer some support. They only know that they are receiving some amount of money which government committed to, but that's all. The, the, problem, the problem in China, which I remember that we were even trying to correct, is that the country is so huge. Where is the president? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? I, I, I remember that there was, there was this time where the president was in one province, the secretary of news was in another province. So they say different things. Whilst, are you getting me? Yeah. It is even very difficult for them to actually come together, mm. to even have meetings. OK. Yeah. So in our time, we were even trying to decentralize uh, the student union. OK. Are you getting um, me? Because yeah. even in Beijing, Beijing alone is the size of Ghana, mm -hmm. with almost 30 million people. But trust me, I am certain that, um, that the embassy will be doing its best. I have confidence in the ambassador. Okay. Yeah, and okay. I, I, I think that they will certainly be taking steps to making sure that the Ghanaian in uh, um, China is safe. And I believe that they're safe. Do you have confidence in the Ghana Health Service? Because uh, we also had a forum just last week mm. talking about coronavirus, and there was something that hit hard. And that was the fact that uh, Dr. Norman, who is the head of the Institute of Emergency Cases, said that he thinks that Ghana is a joke when it comes to our preparedness towards handling the outbreak, if there should ever be a confirmed case in the country. Looking at how much money we've committed to it and how little that amount of money is, and the fact that we, we've put up a quarantine center at you know, the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, and we think that's enough to resolve the issue, when in actual fact that's not. In, uh, Ghana is not safe from any form of disaster that will hit this country. Okay. I can give you a clear example. Forget about this coronavirus thing. I mean, 31st December, I don't know whether you were in town. I was. And then there was a concert um, on the Spintest Road. Mm -hmm. And even the traffic in town, yeah. it tells you that in case of any emergency, if people were to be evacuated, where? The, 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 the infrastructure is not there. Mm -hmm. NADMO is not resourced to the point where they can actually handle any form of disaster. So in any shape or form, if this country should be hit with any form of disaster, trust me, we will we'll definitely be in trouble. But that's a problem then. It is, it is a huge problem. And that is why I keep saying that, look, set priorities right. What is it that we have to be doing? Another example of us being, what, later with what, how many ambulances? Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. constituency, one, one ambulance. ambulance. Where is the infrastructure? These ambulances get stuck in traffic. Let's get the infrastructure right. And when we get infrastructure right, anything at all that we we'll do will sort of like enhance the Ghanaian. But if we don't have the facilities, any form of uh, uh, outbreak will sort of like um, actually But that's the thing. Lives. Your government was in power. They had a number of years to at least mm. put in place some of these measures. We don't have to wait for an emergency or for an outbreak. That, that, that is why my government, when we were in power, we saw a host of chip compounds. We saw a host of hospitals being built. We saw a host of polyclinics being uh, constructed. We saw a, a host of health posts being actually put in place to making sure that these sort of things can be addressed immediately. Now, if you think that ambulances is, and of course, uh, uh, it's not a bad thing at all. It's a very good initiative. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the infrastructure should be there. You understand? If the infrastructure is there, then uh, I think that we will have better use of it. What that. about creating awareness? Because believe you me, um, I think that the media is even championing this whole coronavirus campaign mm. even more than governments. Because... The media platforms are the one constantly churning out information about what's happening here and there. And all we've gotten from governments, the fact that, you know, we're still interacting with government officials to see what we can do to evacuate students. We have just a few options when it comes to um, quarantine centers. And just this weekend, there was news about the fact that the University of Ghana has given one of its uh, buildings for a quarantine center just in case there should be an outbreak on campus. And so the work is being done, but by everyone else apart from government. Yeah, that, that is why I said to you that I, I have, I, 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 I believe in the embassy because I've worked there. I believe in the ambassador there, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, because I know him, um, uh, what he can do. And I'm certain that Ghanaians in China um, certainly will be taken care of. Us in this government, mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I, I think that um, they've never taken the sort of initiative that would address this matter in case Ghanaians will have to be evacuated down here and they are infected with this. Are we politicizing this situation no, no, no. if we, we say we, this we, government has not? Because they haven't. They haven't done anything about it. What differently would you have done if your government was in power? Because then we'll still be speaking what, the same language. What we would have done differently is exactly what we did in, when I was with in the China. chips compound. Okay, when you're oh, in China. Yes, yes. Where, where, where the Ghanaian in China matter. And when you bring that into this country, you realize that in terms of Medicare, mm -hmm. health care, yeah, we did a lot. Okay, like. The country was littered with cheap compounds. Mm -hmm. The country was uh, 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 littered with what do you call it, polyclinics, hospitals were being built and stuff like that. You understand? Okay. So you could see the preparedness and, uh, 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 and the, 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 the sort of like, um, what should I say? readiness of the of the government to making sure that in case of anything at all the facility is there to to address these things but your tenure in china was marred with a lot of controversy and there are people who sent in messages talking about the deportation of Ghanaian um Ghanaians living in china the fact that even nigerians had easy access to documents that made them seem to be Ghanaian, at least so they can find jobs whereas the Ghanaians <laughs> who had you know the z visa who, who, and all who, of that who, 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 were being arrested well they, they they've no, sent no, no, messages no no no, no. hold on hold on. And you're, you're, you that, were not able to do as much to protect the Ghanaian, no, 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 even though no. there was a campaign that said that Ghanaians muttered that, in China. The, the Ghanaian that muttered in China was initiated by myself. Yes. I traveled the length and breadth of China. And traveling the length and breadth of China is not an easy thing. I initiated it. Mm -hmm. I visited so many provinces to meet Ghanaians. I made sure that even in, uh, companies in China like Sanotrack, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. actually signed something with me to making sure that even Ghanaian schooling in China could have internship in those companies. Okay. Yeah, I worked with schools to making sure that we have thousand how many scholarship um, university places for Ghanaians, two hundred of them annually is what uh, 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 a scholarship. Nobody came to, and I, I, I can, I, I'm even certain that even the MPP, uh, what do you call it, uh, ambassador there, mm -hmm. would not, would not, uh, will certainly make sure that no foreigner gets uh, a Ghanaian passport. But these, these are messages from former residents, and no, even some residents still former, in China. Former residents, yeah, check that whether in our time, any passport or any document, yeah, was initiated by myself, mm -hmm. For anybody who is not a Ghanaian, during your time, to 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 actually acquire a Ghanaian passport, but that's now, when me, they were me, making those claims. No, 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 no. Nothing of that nature actually came to my desk. Or were you not aware of it? Nothing of that nature happened. It wouldn't come to my desk. Not a single case of I, a Ghanaian you, let me, being let me arrested for having two or more jobs without a, you know the right. Well, if and all if of that. if you are in China, if a Ghanaian was in China. Yeah, and don't have papers. That same thing could have happened to that Ghanaian in the UK, in the US, Australia. Some of them said it. they actually did have the papers. They were still arrested and the embassy didn't do anything to protect them. That is not true. That is not true. I can refer you to a gentleman, Mr. Odami, mm -hmm. and you can interview Mr. Odami and you would be, he would actually tell you the number of places that we went to actually see to the fact that a Ghanaian is released, we, take them to the airport if they have to be deported and make sure that those Ghanaians are taken care the of. The reason I'm asking this is because you mentioned that this government has not done enough in, to in terms of preparedness towards fighting the coronavirus. Yeah, they, so I mean, these I mean, messages came up saying that, well, he's accusing this government of not doing much. But when he was in power, you know, there were a lot of human rights no, 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 abuses no, no, no. against yeah. Ghanaians in China. Listen, any human rights abuse in China during our time was actually seen to. I even initiated for Ghanaians in China to actually have amnesty. But dealing with a country like China, it's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's not an Why easy thing. Why is it thing. not easy? Wow, the Chinese, for you to achieve anything at all, it's going to take a long, long time. Whoever sent this message is aware of that. And I, Horus Ni Ayi Ankara, Nobody, and nobody in the embassy that I am aware of mm -hmm. actually signed documents for Nigerians or other nationals to actually 
acquire anything Ghanaian. Not a single don't, case. But we do even understand that no, even no, no, in no. Ghana, uh, we, how we they are able to and acquire... Don't forget, and do not forget that even if these documents were actually put together in China, they are brought to Ghana here, yeah, for the final steps to be taken. Mm. You understand? We don't issue passports in China. Passports are issued in Ghana and then sent to us, and then we give it out to the individual. But at least that. if you know someone who knows someone who knows someone, doesn't well, you know somebody easier? who knows somebody who knows somebody. If you're yeah. able to pay, <laughs> Hold is, it, on. is it not easier? Even if it's happening here, yeah? Mm -hmm. Even if it's happening here. And then there is a case that happened in China. I, I, I don't think that, that that is something that one could actually look at and say that, oh, your time in China was marred by these sort of things. Nothing of that nature happened. Whoever sent that should send the evidence, bring it here, and make sure that Horace Ni Ayankra has his signature on that. Well, they're watching, and if you, if you are hearing what Horace Ni Ayankra is saying, kindly send some more evidence concerning, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't, concerning that. Well, they made those accusations, let, so maybe they have some evidence. Let me, let, me, why, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It did not happen. It wouldn't okay. happen. And it never happened under my watch. I never signed anything to say that, oh, give this passport to this individual when everything is shown that this individual is actually a Nigerian. Let's talk about the trade relations between China and Ghana and how coronavirus is impacting us. Because we do understand that when it comes mm. to the two of us, there's this agreement of you know, trade relations. And so if the economy of China is being heavily affected uh, by the coronavirus, and it's been said by, you know, through a study that Ghana is one of the sub-Saharan countries that will be heavily hit um, you know, by the coronavirus outbreak you know, across the world. Mm. And so to you, someone who has lived and worked in China for so long, what do you think could be the impact and how should Ghanaians prepare for that? Oh, uh, it's going to be serious. Um, obviously, uh, it's not only Ghana, even the U.S. I mean, everybody imports from China yeah. because um, they have the cheap labor and then they, they, they do manufacture and um, send these things out. So it's going to have effect on, on, on most countries that actually have this trading relationship with um, um, China. So things are not coming in now because traders are not even traveling to China to yeah. even get these um, goods that are affordable. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the effect is, is, is certainly going to be felt. Uh, the long-term sort of solution is that, hey, let us produce our own stuff. Let us manufacture our own stuff so mm -hmm. that at least the Ghanaian is comfortable with made in Ghana goods. So okay. that we, obviously, there's this interdependence. Nobody is independent these days, but at least... Uh, if we were doing things right, putting things in place and making sure that we manufacture what we use, uh, I think that's uh, uh, um, the impact will be But less. this is a global phenomen phenomenon. No it's country global is an it's island. So whether we like it or not, even if we're producing our own goods, we'll still that is, be heavily that is reliant why, that is on why, other... That is why I said interdependence is, is, is there. And, yeah. uh, we, can, we can't isolate ourselves. But at least uh, it, it, it will help. Why are we not closing our ports? As government... Well, I'm asking you. No, no, no. I don't, I, I don't have the authority to close our ports. Yeah, but why do you think it's not being done? Countries are doing it. Now, Turkey has done it. Okay. So They've closed their ports. They are not allowing people from Iran to come in. They are not allowing goods to come in as well because Iran also was heavily hit. Well, I ask government, but if government doesn't have any answer to that, I believe that because um, what is happening now is that um, the virus is not close to um, Africa. It was recorded in Egypt. <laughs> That's Africa, well, so it's closer than you think. Well, we have we, our, we our, our body, our, we, we share borders with oh, Togo, Ivory Coast. Uh, yeah, but you never know. I mean, if it's yeah, come well, you, to you Africa, never, you, never, you never know. But I think I think that um, government and the Ministry of Health will be the best. Uh, 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 places to actually pose this question. Okay. Now let's talk about the Galamsey fights before we even wrap up on this because uh, it looks like the Chinese seem to have more power over everything, even in our country. I remember the Aisha Wan case and the issue of some other Chinese nationals who were deported mm. when we were expecting that they would, um, you know, be prosecuted for illegal small-scale mining in the country. Now we have this issue of some government officials allegedly being involved in the illegal small-scale. Exactly. And so there seems to be a problem, a big problem in the sense that if we're not even able to prosecute the people who are getting involved in this and we're saying that we're fighting Galamsey, then we're not making any headway. Well, um, it's, 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 there's nothing wrong in actually mining new uh, money. If I say mining new money, I hope you understand. Anything at all that will make the economy work is, 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 is welcome. But Galamsey, as, as it is or was, 
um, have actually disturbed this country in terms of our water bodies, the environment, mm -hmm. name them. And actually, um, these Chinese coming in to sort of like uh, um, undertake this kind of um, illegal mining. Yeah. I remember uh, during our time, the first thing that we did was for us to actually identify the province where they were actually coming from. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we actually blacklisted them. Nobody was coming from that province to Ghana. Okay. We, yes, blacklisted them. And um, I, I remember... Does that I, still exist? It does. Okay. I wrote to Emirates. I wrote to Ethiopian Airline. And uh, they weren't taking any Chinese mm. into Ghana. Okay. And that lady's issue. I should, where, yeah. Yes. Where eventually the NPP actually had him... Uh, had for, her deported. And then and for, the for favors. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't happen under our watch. How would it not happen? Oh, why, would you, why would you take, uh, why would you say, look, take your national back for uh, this sort of favor? No, it wouldn't happen because in the first place, you can never ever go to China and indulge in any illegal thing and you think that you'll be free. So why are we doing it here? That won't be the first case. I Ask mean, this government. Chinese Ask mining this government. Say, illegally say, in this country even, is even, nothing even, new. Even talking about, talking about um, Galamse, yeah, we had all the promises that anyone could have when the MPP wanted to come into government. Mm -hmm. Now Galamse is worse. Our water bodies are destroyed. They were destroyed but, many years ago. Fine. And you said you were coming to fix it. You've made it worse. Mm -hmm. What you have actually done is take the equipment that were being used by these people, the excavators, share it among yourself, and then indulge in the same kind of crime. You take the daily bread of the Ghanaian, you give your reasons, took their equipment, indulge yourself in that same crime. That is evil. What would you have done differently, especially with the Aisha One case as well? Aisha One, guilty of illegal mining, make sure that Aisha Wan is behind bars. That is what the Chinese would have done with the Ghanaian. But the let senior me tell minister you, let said it would have affected let me, trade relations. Let me, let me tell you, what, what trade relations? We would have lost money. What sort of money? So somebody can come in here, trade, in, do illegal stuff, and you say that, what are we going to lose if somebody had come into your country to get herself involved in such an illegal stuff? And you say, Oh, when we don't release this sort of individual, yeah, we are going to lose. And then, in the long run, you are found wanting by taking equipment from people involved in this sort of galamsey, share it amongst yourself, and you get to do the same thing. The goal that they have even found is missing, according to Kennedy and Japan. It's evil. It's not just a crime. It's evil. Okay. It's evil. And, and, and for me, uh, what I believe that has to be done, and I believe that the NDC government, incoming NDC government will look at, is that, you know something, even in China, if this is what is giving them the money that is needed, yeah, things will be put in place that we use science and technology to actually mine properly, we use the science and technology to actually protect the environment, and if this is giving Ghanaians the employment that they desire, yeah, see to the best of how they can get employed by this and making sure that new monies are mined. So um, I, I think that um, it's, it's, it's actually worse now under this government and this certainly has to be ashamed of it because the promise that the Ghanaian uh, had, the belief that they had that Galamse or even the water bodies are going to get better is worse. And what is so bad about the whole thing is that Bella, what you are doing is not right. Mm -hmm. I want to stop it. Mm -hmm. And then I take what you are using from you. I use it to indulge in that same thing. And the president is not even referring uh, 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 the, 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 the seizure of those, what, 400... Well, uh, he did mention no. during the State of the Nation address is that not nobody enough. would go unpunished. Oh, come on. What are you waiting for before you can even refer it to... Well, he's Martin? always said that you need to have concrete evidence before you prosecute anyone. What, so what sort of concrete evidence Investigations are ongoing. By who? By the same ministers who shared, uh, what do you call it, the excavators? By the same minister of environment who is involved? Allegedly. By the same president... Hold on, ma'am. By the same presidency 
that is involved? Did we not see clearly on TV? The individual that is meant to actually mastermind the stoppage of Galamse uh, taking money? But is that enough evidence? It's not. It's, it's well, an well, allegation. It's not is an it not an allegation? Oh, and he madam, has come I'm, out to debunk. Ma um, madam, am know. I on TV? I do understand you. I'm just uh, saying am that. Am I on TV? Uh -huh, you are. Are Ghanaian see me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did we see a gentleman on TV taking money in relation to Galamse? Did the whole country see that? I'm listening to you. The whole country saw it. The whole country is talking about these, what, excavators that went missing, shared amongst MPP uh, uh, officials. Kennedy Japan, who is an MPP man, is saying the same thing. What else do you need to refer the matter to maybe Martin Amidou's office? Mm. Are you get what I'm saying? Okay. Refer it. Okay. Refer PDS to Martin Amidou. Refer this Galam Satan to Martin Amidou. Refer all those things. I mean, there's so many Cases things that happened. Been referred to him. Look, but for the due diligence in parliament by the NDC parliamentarians, this country would have been a mess. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is all time will allow us. Uh, thank you so much, Horace Nia Yankara. It's my pleasure. And, um, well, let me still say it anyway. So he's a former ambassador to China. And so it's been a pleasure speaking to you. My pleasure. And I do hope that at least talking about the students, we will find a way forward, even though it's been said that uh, cases of the outbreak in China have declined. So that is some sort of good news. I, I, I wish them well. I wish them well. And I have the belief in the embassy there that um, they, they'll, they'll see to the... Um, welfare of the Ghanaians in China. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. It's still TV3 New Day. Some more conversations are coming up later as well. We'll be speaking to the winner of Mentor Reloaded. He's in the house with us and he gets to win a two-bedroom house. And the finale took place last night, keenly contested. And so he'll tell you all about, uh, you know, how he was able to clinch the title from his other competitors as well.